So two of President Obama's defense secretaries, both past and present, speaking out about our U.S. strategy to defeat ISIS. First, former Secretary Bob Gates criticizing the president yet again, saying that American troops will likely be needed on the ground. After an interview with Gates, the Washington Post editorial board writing this, quote, Mr. Obama appears to recognize the severity of the threat posed by the Islamic State and appears to be focused on the job of leading the fight against it. But if he continues to allow his ideological resistance to such steps as the deployment of ground forces to constrain the campaign, he will ensure its failure. Those from words from Bob Gates. Now, the current defense secretary, Chuck Hagel, says he believes that the president's strategy on all of this is working. Our anti-ISIS uh, strategy uh, is uh, is comprehensive. We'll start sequencing uh, those uh, new Americans in here uh, uh, starting over the next few weeks. Uh, uh, they are going, uh, as you know, to uh, provide the training and the assistance and the equipping of uh, 12 Iraqi security force brigades. Retired four-star General Jack Keane is the chairman of the Institute for the Study of War, and he's a Fox News military analyst, of course, as well. Good morning, Jack. Good to have you with us. Good to be here, Martha. So obviously the former defense secretary has a bit more liberty to speak his mind than the current defense secretary uh, about what he thinks is going on here, but who do you think is right? Well, clearly, uh, Secretary Gates is, as well as Secretary Panetta, who spoke out. These are two highly respected secretaries of defense that have both served as president, that have added their list to a growing list of leaders in this country who have concerns about this strategy. The, you know, the fact of the matter is, Martha, there is plenty of precedent for changing the strategy. War is not ideological. It's about trial and error. We changed the strategy, Revolutionary War, Civil War, World War II, both theaters, Korea, Vietnam, and also Iraq just recently under George Bush. This strategy we have in play with not providing sufficient resources for the indigenous forces on the ground is really the issue. And the fact of the matter is, when you look at where it's going, it is likely to fail. All right, but you, you listen to Chuck Hagel. He said, you know, we're training 12 Iraqi brigades, including three Peshmerga uh, brigades as well. We're sending in additional special forces to train them on the ground. I, I mean, a lot of people, and I know you have a, a tremendous amount of faith in the special forces. Is that not the way to go, or do they need more of them? Well, the training issue is a good one. We need to train up the units that have to be reconstituted. But even those 12 brigades are just a drop in the bucket. The Iraqis had 17 operational divisions with multiple brigades in each one of them. Some of them don't even exist anymore. So we're relying on, on 12. Three of those will be Peshmerga. But the fact of the matter is there are no plans to put special forces at the company and battalion level when they get into the fight. The trainers are one thing. We're now we're talking about people who would join them in the fight and advise them and also bring in close air support, Apaches and AC-130 gunships to assist them. There are no plans for Joint Special Operations Command direct action forces that operate on the ground against leaders, much as we all witnessed when they took Osama bin Laden down. They do this routinely in Iraq and Afghanistan. We're only using drones to do that. They would be a significant enhancement. And we have to help the Sunni tribes also with training, but also with advisors on the ground, as much as we would do with the Peshmerga and the Iraqi security forces. So you're saying, you know, you just need a, a, a huge step up in the amount of force, both in the air and on the ground and in close air support as well, if you have any prayer at succeeding in this mission. And the president says that he wants to degrade and destroy ISIS. So, you know, if you take him at his word, uh, why would he be, you know, coming so short in what's required? Well, I, I think the boots on the ground issue has frozen him in place. He gets paralyzed by the fear of adverse consequence. What's the adverse consequence? Americans are going to be killed. Americans may be captured. This is the military. This is the risk that they accept and take and willingly take to win conflicts that the nation wants them to win and, and conflicts that they want to, want to support. That's the harsh reality. The other part of the strategy that is wrong is Secretary Hagel said in regards to Syria that we have an attack ISIS only and wait for a political solution to remove Assad. We have to accelerate the removal of Assad. Assad is bombing our forces that we're supporting, the moderate rebel forces, faster than we can train moderate rebel forces 
to assist them. That makes no sense to anybody looking at it. No fly zone is the answer. Put Assad's air power on the ground and then accelerate a political solution because of that military commitment. We're a long, long way uh, from what you suggest. General, thank you very much. General Jack Keane, always good to see you, sir. See you next good time. Good talking to you, Martha.